I'm Alice, this is The Bumbling Vlogger, and welcome to December's episode of Book Box Battle. First of all, I would like to apologise, because it is the middle of January and we're only just filming and hopefully uploading soon-ish the December Book Box Battle, but the problem is that Owl Crate arrived in the second week of December, Illumicrate arrived slightly before that and Fairy Loot only arrived last week. So we've been waiting for it to get here. I oh, know we've got somebody at our door. That was Gemma, our Avon lady, and she's really, really lovely. So I do not begrudge her coming around. <laughs> but as I was saying, um, what was I saying? Yes, this is a bit late because Fairy Loot arrived really late. And also our previous videos have gone up a bit late because with the Christmas holidays and I've just started a new job. So everything has been very up in the air um, and trying to find time to edit has been a huge problem. We've got the filming done, um, but the editing has been behind. So you'll likely have this just after our November book box battle so I'm sorry for the delay on that one as well hopefully things will be settling down a bit more because I'm in my second training week at my new job we'll be coming to my store and just taking over soon which will be lovely um and then hopefully we should have a bit more spare time and a bit more of a routine and everything will go really really smoothly from here she says hopefully so last month I will create one again which means this month if Fairy Loot wins, they draw equal with Owlcrate at five boxes each. If Illumicrate wins, then they go up to, I think, four boxes, which means Owlcrate wins for the year because Illumicrate and Fairy Loot will be drawn. And if Owlcrate wins, then Owlcrate win and they will have won six out of the 12 book box battles in the preceding 12 months, which is wild to me <clears throat> because as a UK subscriber, when I'm looking at cutting back, when I'm thinking about the cost of living, Owlcrate is the subscription that I would feel most inclined to cancel because they don't have a book only option and they have an extra like non-sterling transaction fee. So these boxes cost me a lot each month. But when I think about the fact that that is the box I'm enjoying the most, it means my money is well spent. I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And Owlcrate are obviously doing really good. So I am happy to continue with them. So we are going to leave Alcrate until last because they were our winners for last month and Illumicrate were the loser for last month so we're going to start off with them which also feels fair because they were the first box that arrived so this has been sat in my house for over a month now just waiting for me to open it and somehow I haven't managed to see spoilers so it's just going to be a surprise going in. I have worked out what books they're doing for the next few months um, but I honestly can't remember which book is in which box so what we're gonna find in here today i haven't a clue okay so the theme for this one is better together and straight away on top i can see we've got an exclusive mug which is going to be designed by rosie thorns 88 and i like the mugs but I have too many of them. And I've said this before and I will say this again. There is such a thing as too many mugs and I have reached well, well past that oversaturation point. Um, they have said they're doing less Rosie Thorns mugs next year, which I'm grateful for, but at least they are really stunning. So I don't mind too much getting them. So this one here has a different design to the other Rosie Thorns mugs from what I can remember. I can't remember most of them having that black rim around the top. I might be going mad. I'll ask Sean if he can edit on the screen if this is new or not because it feels a lot deeper than most of my Rosie Thorns mugs and it's also got that very thick rim. So I don't know if they're just going with a different producer but it looks different. But also I haven't opened a box in like six weeks so I might just be losing it. And this has a man holding a harp and a man holding a helmet. So I'm assuming Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And I can't see a prompt card because I put it down over here. Yes, this is Patroclus and Achilles from the Song of Achilles. So at least I recognise the fandom. It's very simple and basic compared to a lot of the Rosie Thorns mugs, um, but it isn't a book that I've read yet. I know it's a very well-loved story though, so it'll be interesting once I've read it to see if I can understand the mug a bit more, like 
the kind of symbolism that she's chosen for the background. At least mugs are useful. I'm happy with that. We've then got... <gasps> a jewellery travel case that makes three months in a row because I got one from Owl Crate and then one from Fairy Loot and now here is one from Illuma Crate and this is by Griffin Antiquities and it's inspired by Crescent City by Sarah J Mass and I love Crescent City who doesn't um oh my god no it's not by Griffin Antiquities that's the and antiquity shop that Bryce works for I'm being dumb this is by Alice Maria Power you can tell I haven't filmed in a while there are going to be mistakes throughout this I apologize for that but we've got a very very beautiful shiny moon a shiny moon dangling down which is lovely and you've got that very intricate gold on this kind of brushed velvet which feels so stunning and the other ones that I've got are like that kind of faux leather feeling um, and they're a little bit kind of crunchy. So this, the fact that this is smooth, like I like this. I'm a very tactile person. I like that a lot. And inside, ooh, it's got the little section for the necklaces. It's got the little section for the rings and it's got the little section for earrings or other little assorted bits that you could do. So very well organised and where it's got such a big zip, really easy to open and close, like that's very smooth. This is probably my favourite item that I've received in an Illumina Crate box for a very long time. I'm very happy with that one. Very beautiful. We've then got a chain pin set inspired by the Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. And this is designed by No One Designs. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, that's stunning. It's like a sword on one side and then the crown on the other. Ooh, okay, that's really pretty. These enamel pins. Again, it's a decorative item, but it's been a long time since they've done like an enamel pin set, um, like a chain one, because it's normally just like a pin by itself. So it's nice to see the set there. We've then got calendar oh it's a desk calendar this year that's interesting um so the calendar normally is just like a wall calendar and it'll have like fan art throughout it um so i'm a bit more interested with it being a desk calendar that, like, that being said i don't really have anywhere that i could put it um but it's different so that like pops like that so you can stand it on your desk and then we've got in here looks like resend and paper um some people in the snow possibly oh no i can't think of anybody wearing a wolf head thing lost on that one um then we've got a lady looking at a man with some very dreamy eyes And then we've got probably Jude and Carden from The Cruel Prince. Had to be my birthday month considering I don't like that series. Then we've got two people kind of in a romantic embrace. Somebody drinking a drink and someone looking at her. Probably Love Hypothesis. Make that up. Um, someone with short pink hair looking very cool and funky. Um... Some people kind of covered in blood. That's menacing. Someone holding someone's hand. Oh no, someone stabbing somebody? That is a concern. And probably the people from Kingdom of the Wicked because there's a snake there. I don't know. Oh, wait, hang on. That is only 10. I've forgotten how the year works. Um, a redhead and a boy. Very cute green jumper. And the snow king and a lady who is picking pockets yeah i have no idea who most of these people are it is a shame that they haven't put on there like who it is each month because i'm not good at recognizing fan art <laughs> like especially for fandoms that i haven't necessarily read i can just go off of previous fan art i've seen um but these all of this artwork is by palats um and it was designed by chatty nora so if i can find the 
breakdown of like what couples these are i'll get sean to put it on the screen um just so you know who they are but i have no idea however it's like a good sized calendar um there's not any space to like write anything or really do any dates you can just kind of circle stuff so it's not something i'm personally gonna get any use out of and also i think i said this last year when they did like couples kissing like I don't know who's going to want to, like, display that in that house and be like, yeah, look, let me just check my calendar. And there's, like, your mum over your shoulder just, like, why are those people kissing on your calendar? Because it's not my kind of thing. But I'm sure it appeals to a lot of people, especially, like, people who have this and the Afterlife subscription. I'm sure will absolutely love that, where it's more romancy. And then it's time for the book. And I'm nervous. Let us open this up. It feels very, very thin for an Alima Crate pick, which is interesting. <gasps> oh purple oh purple blue ombre oh that's alice's two favorite colors together in a lovely little the red scholar's wake by aliette de bodard i recognize the author's name from somewhere but i don't know where um okay we have a signed book plate we have some very beautiful end papers of what look like koi fish. We have a spaceship with some other spaceships. Maybe some asteroids. Um, also the author of The House of Shattered Wings, which I have heard of. Um, so that'll be where I recognise the name from. Um, on this, let's find out what it's about. I am sorry if I butcher any of the names. Zitch C, bot maker, data analyst. Already going well. Bot maker, data analyst, mother scavenger. But those days are over now. Her ship has just been captured by the feared Rice Fish, leader of the Red Banner Pirate Fleet, famous for their double dealing and cruelty. The best Zitch C can hope for is to become an indentured servant and work out her days in peace. The worst is to be tortured to death for sport by the pirates who hold her life in their hands. Rice Fish, sentient ship, leader of the infamous Red Banner pirate fleet, wife of the Red Scholar, or at least she was, until her wife died under suspicious circumstances. Now, isolated, alone and unloved, Rice Fish wants to find out who struck against them and why, and whether she and her people are still in danger. Set against the backdrop of an interstellar war against piracy and the five fleets brutal fight to survive each other and the attackers are raid against them. This is an exciting space opera and a beautiful romance from an exceptional SF author. Okay, I can vaguely remember when they did the theme announcement for this one because basically everybody was saying what the fuck does it mean? That it's like a sentient ship. Um and based off the fact that there's two people here. I don't really know especially because like this sh I'm getting like because the red scholar is dead so the wake must be like after the funeral so I don't know I, I don't really know what to I don't really understand the way I thought of it was that it might be kind of like Aiden from Illumine when like Aiden is the AI like in the ship but he has like he develops personality and feelings because of his interactions with the characters so i thought maybe it might be that but now i'm seeing that it's two characters on the front and i'm a little confused because i thought it was going to be one character married to like basically aiden but now it looks like it's not that and it also looks like it might be sapphic and i wasn't expecting it to be sapphic because it didn't sound like it was in the synopsis the synopsis on goodreads or the like theme reveal hints that Lima Crate did. I can't even remember where I saw it. But this definitely is different to what I was expecting. Um I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm surprised it's so short because it seems like it's a hell of a lot to try and fit into quite a short book length. Especially because like it's not even small font. It's like normal size font. Yeah, it's just just over three hundred pages. So this is gonna be a really, really quick read and I might actually try and get through it when they do their weekly read long because three hundred and twenty pages in a week does not sound as crazy as trying to read like Empire of the Vampire in a week. So we'll see. But yeah, that actually sounds really interesting. So a bit of a mixed bag. Like I really, really love that jewelry box. And I'm really not a fan of that calendar. That being said, I don't even think that we got a calendar this year, so we could at least put it up so we know what date it is. Um, 
like the pin badges um and again iffy on the mug so it's a mixed bag we'll see what happens with fairy loot which we're about to open chunka 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 i hope this was worth the wait because like yeah it took ages ages to get here this did they said just before christmas that they were shipping it out and then it was like the new year and it still hadn't arrived i was like okay that's fine see how it goes oh this is different <laughs> speed man i don't even know if you can see that but like <laughs> amazing so they've changed what they're using for their packing materials at least um we have a book sleeve i can't see the spoiler card so we'll get to that in a bit but there's a book sleeve here um and this looks like it is inspired by caraval yes it is because it's got stephanie carver's name in the corner there every person has the power to change their fate if they are brave enough to fight for what they desire more than anything oh okay i like book sleeves i have not read caraval yet oh it's really really soft inside that's nice yeah, I'm always going to be a fan of book sleeves, so that is a win. And then we have... Oh, is this a face? Oh my god, a face towel! I don't think I've got one of those. I've got a microfiber cloth and I've got a beach towel, but I don't think I've had a face towel before. And this is Le Cirque de Rave, which I believe is from the Night Circus, Circus of Dreams. Um, but we will have to find out when we find the spoiler card. But oh, that's that's really, really handy. I don't actually have a face cloth at the moment. I just kind of wash my face in the shower and deal with it but I've been thinking about wearing makeup again because I've got more time in the mornings um so this will come in handy if I do decide to undertake that endeavor we've then got bookends oh they're going all out this month oh wow okay oh my god oh Sophia's gonna absolutely love these they've got ninos on them that's what my daughter calls horses ninos it's like a um merry-go-round but bookends oh oh my god okay we've we've been like rearranging and we've got a load of the kids books upstairs now and we've been thinking of getting like shelves above the um side so if we do these will be really really good on that and we'll absolutely love them okay this like this is like exactly the box for me <laughs> and then we've got the spoiler card right at the very bottom so the book sleeve is designed by Kim Carlika Art. The carousel bookends are designed by Jez Hawk and the face towel is inspired by the Night Circus and it's by Blanca Design. So we're not doing too badly there. We've then got the tarot cards for the month which are the moon and the sun. And these are Lei and Ren. So Lei is the sun card and Ren is the moon card and these are from Girls of Paper and Fire illustrated by Ars28 and then we've also got at the bottom here foiled collectible mythology bookmarks and I love these things. I always love any kind of prints that have a very subtle amount of foiling on them because I think that they're really beautiful it just adds such a nice little touch and this bookmark set has been absolutely stunning every single one of these bookmarks has been really beautiful so I'm glad to see another two of these in here and um, this is Aphrodite and Aries. They are very beautiful. And now it's time for the book, which I'm assuming, based off of the fact that we've had quite a lot of like circus themed stuff, is going to be circusy. But we will just have to find out. Oh. <laughs> We've got some beautiful red roses. Oh, 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 I'm a sucker for flowers. Oh my God. Okay, so we've got an art print in here, which has the author letter on the back. And that art print is designed by Kirisi Art. We've then got the bookmark and the fairy scoop like we do every month. And this is Cruel Illusions by Margie Fuston. Win or die. A deadly competition, a magical secret society, a chance for revenge. I'm in. I am wholeheartedly in. I like secret society books. I like like deadly competition books. Like I, I am in. I, <laughs> I, do, I don't even need to know what it's about. I want to read this. This is like really beautifully foiled all around the back as well. All of the red that you can see is foiling, and then obviously the pages are stunning. Stunning, she says. Um, 
So this has artwork on the end papers by Curiosity Art, which features some of the characters. They're in a garden late at night doing some knife work and normally a different one at the other end. Yeah, these people are leaving a house and almost touching interesting and then we've got oh oh beautiful foiling on the hardcover the two characters in a bit of a moment wow this is gorgeous oh my god i've just seen the like tagline bit and it's caravel meets buffy the vampire slayer oh my god okay could you get a more interesting combination let's see what it's about Ever since the vampire murdered her mother, Ava has been determined to get revenge. But ten years later, having survived foster home after foster home and without a single sighting of a vampire, Ava has begun to lose hope. That is, until she stumbles across a hidden magic show where she witnesses impossible illusions. The magicians may not be the bloodsucker she's hunting, but Ava is convinced something supernatural is afoot. When she sneaks backstage to catch them in acts they can't explain, the magicians reveal they're part of an ancient secret society that possesses true magic and that Ava has the same power in her blood they do. If she joins them as their apprentice, they promise to give her the power she needs to avenge her mother. But there's a catch. If Ava wants to keep the magic they offer, she needs to prove she's worthy of it, and to do so, she must put on the performance of her life in a sinister and dangerous competition where illusion and reality blur, and the only way out is to win or die. I am inconquerably interested in this. I am very happy that they've included this because this sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> So that was a box full of beautifully designed items that were all very useful and as I've said I love useful items and the aesthetic of that book design was just absolutely stunning so it is going to take a lot for Alcrate to beat that and I don't think Illumicrate's managed it so I think Illumicrate just officially came in third place in 2022's book box battle series. That is gutting for them, but like juicy goss for me because like, oh my God, I did not expect Fairy Loot to do that, but I love the fact that they did that. <laughs> and now it's our crate time. So last box of 2022. <sighs> I'm feeling the pressure now. I need to cut the tape, what am I thinking? I'm just like <laughs> trying to rip my fingers through a bit. I am a bit of a dunderhead. Come on, Alice. There we go. We're in. And we've got the star-crossed prompt spoiler card thingy. We've got the last literary luggage pin designed by Hey Atlas Creative because they're doing a different pin set in 2023. That's like these really, really sick, um, I think it's called treasured tomes. It's like hinged pins that are book shaped and they open up and reveal like a scene inside. It's sick, but I'm gonna be sad to lose the literary luggage pins because I've been really getting a kick out of these. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And the last one is, time for baby shark to start singing apparently, that's threatening. The last one is, spend time in Kragnadun. I don't know what that is, but it's pretty. It's like a nighttime scene in some kind of rocky area. Inspired by Outlander. Never seen, never read, no interest in, but it's still beautiful. So I still get a kick out of it, even if it's for a fandom that I don't know anything about. We've then got. Feels like another straw set. You are the bane of my existence and the object of all my desires. Oh, my laptop just died. I hate everything. I was gonna say that this sounds a lot like how I feel about Sean and that has just been proven because when he set me up for my filming, he didn't think to plug the laptop in and it has just died. So, <laughs> how funny. That's actually like perfect timing. And these are, heart-shaped straws <laughs> which feels like more of a novelty than a convenience but it's definitely unique it's not something that I've had before it's got an absolute kick out of this so that's very cool and it's also got like the little brush to clean them in there 
which that brush is going to be working overtime on sure that shape. Yeah, because the brush is just like a normal, normal shape and size. And these are designed by... I don't know. Oh, these are inspired by Bridgerton. And they're designed by Wink and Wonder. We then have a little box. And the little box, whatever is in it, is designed by Lichen and Limestone. Oh! Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Salt and pepper shakers. You've got Dame Blanche. Which has like a little eagle and a snake on the back oh these are inspired by serpent and dove and chasseur i don't know if it's a relevancy towards like why serpent and dove would be the salt and pepper shakers but again something i've never received in a book box and something that is ridiculously useful because who doesn't use salt and pepper i don't think many people can say that they don't we have another little box and this is oh astra inclinant sed non obligant it's a moon shaped little tray which i'm guessing is like a little tea bag rest because it's got the little tea there yeah tea bag rest designed by lady chub letters they did a tea bag rest before and it was this gorgeous um I think it was a star shape. It was in the Sweet and Bitter Magic box. I'll try and get a picture of it up on the screen. Um, but this will work so beautifully with that. So that's really gorgeous. Might be doing the same thing, but they're doing it in a different way because they're including the little tea bag and they're making it complement the other one. So that's clever. We also have something in a pouch. The dream chooses the dreamer. It's a little organiser. Oh my god. So this is inspired by Strange the Dreamer, which if you've seen this channel before, you will know is one of my favourite books of all time. The whole, like the duology is one of my favourite series of all time. So getting a strange item is amazing at the best of times, but like you could just hang that on the door and it can be a little organiser. Instead of like these bags that keep getting included that are like, okay, that's going to clutter up the side, like they don't have like shape in them or they look really, really similar. You've got something that you can just hang on a door and just, easy as that. Wow. Um, and this is, this is designed by Off The Hook Studio. I'm going to say it now, I haven't even seen the book, the book and I think how great's one. <laughs> like, oh my God, that alone is worth the money to me wow we've got a little bookmark um that has the first three chapters of unseely by ivelisse hoosman not heard of it but that's a cool little edition we've got a little envelope here that has another bookmark in for tonight maybe we can just be leia and elias and then it's got the characters on the other side that is inspired by an ember in the ashes by sabata here and this is oh wait no oh it's two i was like what so this is leo and elias and then this is karu and i don't remember his name akiva from a daughter of smoke and bone your soul sings to mine my soul is yours and it always will be in any world so a nice little bookmark set again with two completely different designs front and back which is nice um and those are designed by kim kalika art and then we get to the book, which I'd forgotten I'd seen spoilers for this, but I've seen spoilers for this because I don't like the original cover. The original cover's got like, Sean, please put the original cover here. Um, It has a girl's face with like, kind of like body horror stuff going on. And it looks a lot like kind of House of Hollow. It looks a lot like Wilder Girls. And it's just nice that this is completely different. It has like a really intense fox and then a wolf and then a swan and it's just beautiful and this is designed by i can't remember ross dottier ross dottier because i saw it on um ross dottier's instagram and was like i'm not even mad that i've seen spoilers because that is so freaking stunning um but i wasn't sure if that was going to be this month's book or next month's book oh the pages are blank which is like a bummer because fairy Luke's pages are really beautiful but the cover the cover redesign i think it's got me i can't open it 
I'm nearly out of time on my camera. Ah. This is the most stressful book box battle I've filmed ever. <laughs> Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Frickle, frackle. There we go. It's free. It's free, and it's beautiful. It's so freaking. Oh my god! And the foiling, and there's foiling on the back. The forest was speaking, and a wolf was at the doorstep. Oh my god! Like, what does that mean? Then there's end papers that are like, oh, 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 clever. They put the original cover underneath. Every sacrifice deserved a song. So, people who love the original cover still have it. People who aren't opposed to the original cover, oh go me, have a different cover. And then we've got this under the dust jacket artwork as well, of like a lady with some flowers and somebody watching her creepily from the other side. Hmm. I wonder what his story is. So, the reversible dust jacket is illustrated by Niru Sky. And the hardcover case, the art is by Charlie Bowater. So that must just be the original art. Um, and Ross here has created the beautiful pattern for the end papers. And then there's also a author letter as well. So they've gone all out with this one. Is it signed? It is signed. And it's beautiful. Wow. Damn, I was not expecting the original cover on the hardcover. That's really cool. So we will just quickly read the blurb on this one um, and see what it's about. We are not going to have time. I'm going to have to contact Sean and see if he knows where the memory card is. Panic! Outsiders are always given a choice. The forest or the lake. Either way, they're never heard from again. Lilo has spent her entire life on Endla, coexisting with the bloodthirsty forest and respecting the poisonous lake that protects her island from outsiders who seek to destroy it. But as much as Lilo cares for her community, she struggles to accept that her younger brother will be exiled by his next birthday unless he gains the magic of enchanted song so vital to Endla. When Lilo sees a young outsider on the verge of drowning in the lake, she knows exactly what she's supposed to do, but in a moment that will change everything, Lilo betrays her family, her best friend and Endla by making an unthinkable choice. Discovery could lead to devastating consequences for both Lilo and the outsider Jaren, but as they grow closer, Lilo realises that not all danger comes from beyond the lake and they can only survive if Lilo is willing to question the very fabric of her society, her people, and herself. <sighs> that does sound really good. But that doesn't excite me quite as much as Cruel Illusions. Oh no, I've got a decision to make, haven't I? So, Aluma Crate out of the running. Congratulations on coming third out of three. I mean, it's still bronze. It's still bronze. It's still a good thing. Um, oh, okay. So, fairy loop. I adore the book sleeve. I adore the bookends. I love the foiled bookmarks. And the face towel is going to come in so freaking handy. And the book is gorgeous and sounds amazing. And I love the redesigned cover. I love the little illustration on the hark of a case and I really really like the end papers as well and then you come to Owl Crate who I love the fact that they have included salt and pepper shakers but I haven't read Serpent and Dove I love the fact that they've included the little tea bag moon because it's beautiful and I will probably use it as a trinket dish but I don't drink tea that often so I'm not going to really use that as much as other people would. The same with the straws. They've put a lot of metal straws in this year. Yes, it's unique that they're heart-shaped, but it's still metal straws. The organiser is amazing, and I will use this. And I think this could actually really, really help me and my family because we've been trying to declutter and we've been trying to get things organised and something like this will be really, really helpful. But... Again, I like the bookmarks, but I don't like them as much as the foil bookmarks. So that's both a point in their favour and against them. And the cover is stunning. Absolutely gorgeous, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, I don't like the original cover. So the fact that it's underneath isn't a selling point to me. 
and the story doesn't sound as exciting as Cruel Illusions. So, as an entire box, I'm going to pick Fairy Loot. If I had to pick my favourite item of the whole episode, it would be this. It would be this organiser. But I think, considering the quality of both is so high that it's almost impossible to separate them, my gut is telling me to go with Fairy Loot because I think, for me, I prefer the items. I prefer the aesthetic. And that means that they get the points for this episode. Which means, if I'm right... Fairy Loot have won five this year. Owl Crate have won five this year. But that'll mean an Owl Crate only won two this year, and that doesn't sound right. Have they? Sean can verify the statistics. I'm just going off of my memory, which is extremely poor. But I think that means that we've got two winners of Book Box Battle for the Year, which isn't terrible. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you think that I picked the right winner. Please let me know what you thought of these boxes. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to subscribe, we'd be super duper grateful. I'm Alice. This is The Bumbling Blogger. And make sure you join us next month for the first episode of the 2023 Book Box Battles. Because I think it's going to be absolutely stellar. Thank you for watching. Bye! Super grateful. I'm Alice. This is The Bumbling Blogger. And I'll see you next month. No, I won't because the card is full. I did not do that quickly enough. I hate everything. <laughs>